Hello my creative peeps and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today we're doing a very easy mermaid scale tutorial for beginners. So we're just going to dive right in. What you want to do is you want to take and make a scalloped pattern. And in the middle of each scallop dip is where you will start and end your new scallop. As you can see I'm doing here. Hopefully that made sense for you. I'm going to show you in this video quite a few different ways of creating very interesting mermaid scales. We're going to do some more advanced layering pieces, but also some very easy, simple, quick ways. So stay tuned until the end to see all of that. And let's just get started. So first I'm going to lay down a wash of water and I'm going to make a watercolor background. Now this is a reverse engineering technique for the mermaid scales. We will come back to this once it dries, but uh, for this one I'm just laying down, like I said, a bunch of watercolor. I chose these colors because one, mermaids, and two, they work really well together. Um, the pink and the blue blend nicely to make a purple. If you'd like to know more about how I work with color, and color theory within my journals to make really nice color mixes um, and harmonious pieces and stuff. I have a lesson on that in my class, in my creative class, using watercolor and collage. You can find that over on Skillshare um, or in my Etsy shop if you'd like to do that. So I'm just laying down the watercolor and I'm kind of making a weird shape. Um, because I don't want all of my mermaid scales to be, you know, clumped in one like square or anything that would look weird. So next I'm showing you another way you can do this by drawing the mermaid scales first and laying down the color after. So I'm just taking some archival waterproof ink and I'm drawing a bunch of those scales that we made at the top. Now you can either leave them in that triangle pattern or you can kind of, you know, have some coming off to the side to make the scale pattern look a little more interesting. If you're doing this on a tail, you'll already have your guidelines uh, done out for you, obviously, but because I'm just doing the scales by themselves, I have to kind of come up with my own shape. So I'm just kind of closing off the ones on the sides that didn't have, you know, a thing and you could actually reverse engineer it the way that I'm doing this and instead of doing scallops do waves if that makes sense to your brain if not and it totally confused you just ignore what I said <laughs> so anyway moving on to coloring those I decided to use some of my pearlescent gouache colors so I am using first the pearl aqua blue and then the pearl emerald green. These are from Arteza. If you have not seen my review of the Arteza gouache, I will leave it linked in a card above so you can check it out. Um, I'll be using various materials in this video, so as many as I can find will be linked below. So I'm just going ahead and painting those in, alternating rows doing the aqua first and then the emerald. And again, this is just a really easy way to do it. You could mix and match all of these different styles that I'm going to show you to create a really interesting piece. For example, in this one, you could draw the scales first and then do the wet on wet water technique over it as long as your pen is permanent. Uh, that way, you didn't have to worry about getting precisely in each scale. You could just do an abstract type coloring and that looks really cool as well. I've done that before. So, yep, just continuing filling those in. Uh, I did get some questions about what um, type of pens would work over gouache and that is a hard question to answer. My answer would be you have to test it for yourself. 
Uh, but you do have to remember that gouache is reactivated with water, um, unless it's acrylic gouache. If it's acrylic gouache, my guess is you could probably write over it with whatever you wanted. But with the gouache from Arteza that's not acrylic, um, you have to make sure you're not using like a marker or something because it's just going to pick that pigment back up. Um, it might work if you had a thin enough layer, but you know, it just, it is what it is. I wouldn't use a fountain pen over it um, because you might clog up your fountain pen with the particles um, and that would not be good. So I just thought I would take a minute to answer that question. Hopefully that helped. So returning back to this piece here, what I'm doing is I'm taking some colored pencils. These are also from Arteza. These are the watercolor pencils. I really enjoy these. Um, I am using the lilac, the shamrock green, and the flamingo color. And I'm just going over the patches where I put down the watercolor. So I'm using the coordinating color with the watercolor that I put down and I'm putting in my scallop scales after the fact. Now this can be a really fun thing to do, but if you've never done mermaid scales before, it can be a little stressful just because you are kind of trying to squish them all in. You're not just making one straight line across. Um, you're doing kind of a higgledy-piggledy thing. I like doing it this way, but um, if it's your first time doing it, don't stress yourself out. Um, do the other technique that I showed you first and then move on to this one. Unless you are just all for it and you want to just, just go, then just go. Just do your thing. So I'm continuing on with that pattern there. I'm also going to do several more layers on this piece to enhance the scale pattern. And I wanted to take a minute to say, oh, first, I'm <laughs> what I'm doing to make this pattern is I'm coloring in the scale so i'm not going all the way to the edge on any of the sides i'm just kind of putting a little scribbly blob in the center and coloring all of those in now if you like how this piece came out i will be making a vinyl sticker of this mermaid scale piece here and that is going to be exclusive to patreon to celebrate my one year over there um, Patreon has been a very wild ride and I've had so much fun with the amazing peeps over there. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that for the month of May to celebrate my one year and my love of mermaids, if you join my vid squad tier or above over on my Patreon, you will get a vinyl sticker of this mermaid scale detail mailed to you at the beginning of June which um, again will be exclusive to that release basically. You can't get it anywhere else. So I'm super excited for that. Um, I'll have samples and reminders coming out about that and stuff later, but yeah, super excited. So we will continue that piece still, um, but next I just wanted to kind of jump in and show you another fun mixed media technique. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some Dina Wakely acrylic paint, and I really like it because it holds whatever shape you put it in. So it's really fun for this technique. And then I'm just taking a concealer brush, there we go, which has that kind of scallops um, shape to it. I just got mine at the Dollar Tree. And I'm, all I'm doing is I'm dipping my brush in the paint and making a little scallop by pressing the brush down onto the paper. And it just is a really cool, um, mixed media thing. This technique gives tons of really cool texture because of the paint that I'm using because it's heavy body it holds its stroke there. So this one was a lot of fun to do. You can either wait uh, between dries which is what I did for this first layer or you can go in while the layer that you just did is still a little wet and it will kind of blend those two colors together. You get a little bit of both within there, which is also a very cool look. So I just wanted to throw this in there to give you another option and show you that there's many ways you can make these mermaid scales and just have some fun with it. Pull out your supplies and get to playing. 
Now we will put finishing touches on all of these pieces and I will also show you another scale design in just a few minutes. So if you're overwhelmed at this point and you're like, Leanne, I cannot do mermaid scales. This is all so complicated with all the color. You can do something like this where you just take a pencil and you make this three pointed scale design here. It just gives it the illusion of having some texture. It looks really pretty. You could do just all one color if you wanted and you could leave it just like this as it is with the pencil or you could do something like this. Since I've done watercolor pencil, I just took my a paintbrush with some water on it and I'm just gonna kind of break up that pigment a tiny bit. It is super light because I didn't lay down the pencil very thick, but I think it gets you, you know, the general gist of the idea. And the cool thing about the watercolor pencil is if you're pushing hard enough, then your lines will kind of stay there. So you can literally just stop at this step and it looks really cool. If you wanted to go even simpler without the texture marks, you could do the technique that I'm showing you right about now <laughs> with the purple scales. So basically we're just going to make the scales again but this time with the watercolor pencil, we are just going to color the scale in and wet it down. Now, I really like look, do the watercolor look, but honestly, if you didn't have watercolor or you didn't want to use watercolor, you can just leave it like this. Do your scallops, color it in, and you're done. Um, <laughs> it's really all up to you on how you'd like to create your scales. And again, like I said, you can mix and match any of these techniques to work uh, for whatever piece that you're working on or whatever mood you're in that day. So once again, returning to this piece and I'm gonna put the final finishing touches on all of them. What I'm doing is I'm actually taking some gel pens. These are by Parku. I did a review on these last week and I have been Loving them. I've actually been using them for several weeks, um, but if you missed that review, I will put it up in the card linked below, but I found three colors in their set that matched perfectly. So I'm just going over the scallops with the gel pens because I really wanted it to stand out even more than it already was, and it just continues to add to the texture. As long as you keep working in the same colors, your layers won't get too um, lost and it won't look weird. So then I decided I needed the center texture darker to go with a very dark gel pen. So I took my same three pencils again and just went over and colored in the center to darken up wherever I felt it needed it. And that completes that final look. Um, you'll see a close up of it in the end, but that is what I will be making the exclusive vinyl sticker out of and I cannot wait to put it on all the things. So next to put the finishing touches on these two, I'm using Posca paint pens. Posca paint pens are some of my, like literally my all time favorite paint pen ever. Like I don't ever want to buy any other brand. <laughs> like I'm good. So um, the metallic, I'm just taking the black pen and I'm just re-going over the scallops. I'm not going to do any texture. I'm just going to leave them as is. And I think they look really cool. It would look awesome uh, on a tail. And then with the mixed media ones with the acrylic paint, I'm just going in with the white Posca paint pen. Um, I did have to be a little careful because it wasn't totally dry and I was being a little impatient. Um, but this came out really interesting. It also gave a different effect um, than the one above because I didn't draw out the scallops ahead of time. I used that brush. So made them more squished and kind of behind each other and I really did like that look. It was really cool. That brings us to the end of this video. Here's a close up of all of the 
mermaid scale patterns that we made today. I really hope you found this useful and I cannot wait to see your scales. If you make any on this from this video, please uh, tag me in it or send me a picture of it. I would love to see them. Thank you so much to my patrons for allowing me to continue to create free content over here on YouTube for you guys. Without them, I would not be here sharing this tutorial with you today. Um, and don't forget about the one year celebration that's happening um, during May. I will leave the details in the description. And of course, you can always find it over on Patreon. So again, thank you guys so much for watching today. Happy Mermaid, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.